I did ask you guys how you want this tutorial and the majority want a step-by-step -step beginner tutorial. So we're going to do this, but if you're already tech savvy, check out the timestamps to skip ahead to the actual setup. In UK, usually when you subscribe to an internet package, your internet service provider or ISP will include one of these for free. This is a residential all-in-one device. It's an internet router, it's a firewall, it's a switch, it's a wireless access point, and you name it. But depending on where you place it inside your home, you may not get Wi-Fi coverage everywhere. Even if you place it bang in the middle, there are things like other wireless interferences and building structure that would prevent or at least diminish the Wi-Fi signal. The good news is, if you have an older one of these lying around, you can turn it into a second access point for free without messing with your existing main router. All you need to do is to reset this back to factory setting, connect it to a computer, change some settings inside, and then connect this to your existing router. And Bob's your uncle. Let's take it out. <laughs> Hey Nim Tags and welcome, this is Ash from Hilmai Tech and if you're new on this channel, I want to help you improve your relationship with tech, so find a subscribe button, click on it, click on the bell icon to go from newbie to techie. Also, Amazon affiliate links in the description below will help out the channel without costing you extra. Thanks a million. For this setup, you will need the following. First, an existing older router which is still working and usually there might be a tab at the back with some information or you may find it at the bottom and you will need things like the admin name for this console you will also need the admin password you will also need the ssid name that's your wi-fi network and you will also need the wi-fi password you can change these later on in the settings number two you're going to need an ethernet cable now this is a cat5 ethernet cable but if you have a cat5e it's even better and cat6 even better in theory the higher the number the better but at least a cat5 as long as you've got the internet bandwidth and speed to benefit from it now the length of this ethernet cable is going to depend on the distance you can connect your existing hub to your second hub and you may have issues depending on how easy or difficult it is to filter through a cable like this and if you are in a building where maybe building regulations prevent you to do this another option is to use something which is called a power line adapter these usually come in a pair and you plug one end to your existing hub and the other end to your other one and it's relatively simple to pair because you press the button for a few seconds and it pairs both devices on both ends now power line adapters work on your electrical wiring system and as long as both ends are on the same circuit you will be able to get internet over through your electricity the cheapest option obviously is going to be the ethernet cable but that is another option however i would not suggest you just go buy one of these to test for this try to find a way to get your wire between the two points unless you have no choice i will actually be using one of these today because i already had them so it's not costing me anything extra and the third thing you will need a computer with an ethernet port because you can connect the second router to that computer now some modern laptops especially the thin models do not have an ethernet port if you have a choice use a desktop if you don't you can use a laptop but you need to disconnect the laptop from any and all internet or network whether it's wired or wireless otherwise you might mess with your existing hub settings and now for the actual setup so step one is get your power cable and turn your hub on and right now there is an amber steady light i would advise you to wait for it to completely come on which might be a test to check if it's still working. Now on this model, when it's completely on, you will have the blue light here and the blue light here as steady, not flashing anymore. And the middle, it says broadband and this will not be on. Your mileage and color will vary. Check out the device that you have with its manual. So once it's turned on, as you can see, you've got both blue LED lights as steady, not flashing anymore. Find a reset button at the back and you need a small pin for this. Now on this model, I'm going to press and hold for about 20 seconds until the light changes again and it's going to change into a flashing amber as you can see. But I'm going to wait for it to completely start to flash and this usually take about 20 seconds and your one may vary. 
There you go, it's starting to flash. Now that it has reset back to factory settings, get your ethernet cable and plug it into one of the yellow ethernet ports. Anyone would do, I'm gonna plug it into number one. Now on this model, there is a red BT Infinity port. You don't need this one. And on most devices, you just need to plug it into the normal yellow ethernet port. And now plug the second end into the ethernet port of your computer. If done correctly, you may get this window on an internet browser, which says can't connect to broadband. So what you want to do is go to your windows start button, click on it and you type in CMD, press enter and you're going to get this window. Now you don't need to be admin for this. Alternatively, you can also right click your start menu button and go to windows PowerShell admin, but this should be fine. Now here type in IP config and press enter and you're going to get some information now on this machine i've got a virtual box which says ethernet adapter virtual box we're going to ignore that that's not important what's important is the ethernet adapter ethernet and the ipv4 address that is the ip address of your computer the subnet mask don't worry about this this is a generic standard four digit code and the one that you want is a default gateway and right now it says 192.168.1.254 you need to make a note of this you can also find this information on your hub at the back or on a tab and what you want to do is to open up a browser and type in this IP address 192.168.1.254 and press enter. Now you may get some uh, interface like this asking you for the admin password which you need to get from your back of your hub. You can also change the password if you want to at this stage. Your device may vary, you may have different kind of interface but the steps usually should be the same. Now I'm gonna enter the admin password that is on the tab and caps lock is important here. I'm only gonna use these information for this tutorial. I will change the password afterwards or I may end up not using this hub anyway. But for this tutorial, I will rename the password to something simple. I will call it password123. But I do not advise you use password123. It is a very bad password and change password and open BT Hub Manager. And once you're here, you need to find DHCP setting of your device. Now on some hubs, it will be an advanced setting options and then go to IPv4. On this one, we need to click on A to Z and look for DHCP settings, which is this one. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol and it is responsible to give IP addresses to a device on a network. Right now our IP address is 192.168.1.254. We need to change it to a static IP address so it doesn't change every time we restart it. And you have a range here which is 192.168.1.64 to 253. So you should pick a number between 64 and 253. I'm going to pick number 200, okay? Every time you make a change, you need to click on apply and click on yes. And remember this IP address, dot .200 and click on yes. Now at this stage, your window might either freeze or this uh, continuous loop will keep showing because it's now changing the IP address to the new one. Don't worry about this. All you need to do, you might need to give it a few moments but open another tab and type in that new IP address, which is 192.168.1.200 and press enter. And now if you want to go and check, go back to the A to Z, go on DHCP settings here. And it's asking you for the new password because we changed the password. So I'm going to put in my password, which is password 123 and click on OK. Don't need this. And as you can see, our IP address now has changed. This is now the IP address for this second hub. Now what I want you to do is to change the DHCP server from enabled to no and click on apply. This time you won't have to wait for too long, hopefully. And if you have something like uh, authoritative DHCP, you need to also click as off or no. Now this is done. Go back to the A to Z, we're going to find the next uh, setting, which is going to be the firewall. Click on it. And here we're going to disable firewall and click on allow all traffic to pass through the firewall and click on apply and click on yes, because your firewall will now be taken care of by your existing main router. 
and now go back to A to Z and the last setting we're going to do is something called UPNP which stands for Universal Plug and Play and here we've got two settings leave the first one as is UPNP on but if you have extended UPNP security make this as off click on apply and you're good to go. This is responsible for smart devices like printers and mobile phones to automatically connect to your network. And that's it. Now, this is still on and it's connected to your computer. So disconnect your computer from the Ethernet port. Now, with one end still connected to your Sagon router, go plug the other end into your existing router. Any Ethernet port would do. You can reconnect your main computer back to the internet if you want to at this stage. Now get yourself a wireless device like a smartphone or a laptop and all you need to do is to find the second access point SSID name. In our case, this is going to be the BT Hub 3-5x6R. Okay, on your phone, now go to the Wi-Fi settings and uh, go to connections on this one go to wi-fi and find the network which is going to be this one bt hub 3-5x6r and uh, you may need to input the wi-fi password i've already done this before so i wouldn't have to but if you did need to just input your wi-fi password as you would normally do and it says connected and uh, that's good to go you can also if you want if you have like a speed test uh, app on your phone you can just do some speed test check. I'm with Virgin Media here and I have about 100 Mbps. So we're going to see how much download and upload speed it gives me. As you can see, we're not really getting 100 because the limitation of this hub is, I think, 54 Mbps only. Something which I'll explain later. If you have a better hub, you will get better speed. And currently I'm getting about 35 download and under 9 as upload is good for me. Now that you've successfully reset and tested your second hub close to your existing hub, you can now switch it off and then take it to whatever location you want to take it to in your building and then just connect it there. Please make sure you do this step before you go to the other location, otherwise you might not know whether it's actually working and you might have to restart the whole process. Now for a few notes and one caveat. I'm going to start with the caveat. We thought that the smartphone would automatically connect to the closest and the strongest signal. That wasn't the case. And I tested with three Android devices. We even disconnected the phones and went completely the opposite direction of each hub. But when we came back, it would not reconnect to the what we thought was the closest and the strongest signal. It will only do what it wants to do. And I asked a few network engineers and they seem to think that it is a limitation of wireless technology and signal because if you can imagine the wireless signal are bouncing all over the place and there are other factors like other wireless range devices in your area that affects connectivity a lot which is a testimony for the instability of wireless range which is why every technician that I know we prefer hardwired connection over wireless any day it's usually a pain in the bum but that's something you're gonna have to deal with I don't have a workaround for this if you're an engineer let us know if you've got a workaround what people have told me they do is when they're using their mobile phones when the internet was going down they would see what was happening and having to manually switch I know it's not ideal but it's just something you have to live with second point this is an auto wireless box and I struggled to reset this for a whole day until I realized I did not have to change the IP address or any other settings inside. I just hard resetted it and plugged it in and it was working. So I don't want to question it. It might be because not every router will act as an access point. I don't know. Again, let us know below if you have any further clues on this as with the both BT Hub ones and one TP-Link that I tried, I did have to go through the process of assigning new IP address, you know, resetting and changing firewall and UPnP and the whole lot. Don't necessarily assume that you did something wrong. Maybe you did, but it may be just your device. And unfortunately, I can't give you a tutorial on every single device, unless if you want to send it to me, we can test it and then do a tutorial on that specific device. Having said that, point number three is this older one was only giving me about 54 Mbps also on the TP-Link which I tried. So there are some older routers that will be limited in their speed. Even if you have 200 Mbps or 1000 Mbps, you will only get Wi-Fi limited to the range or the speed of your existing or your second router.
And number four, why not just buy one of those Wi-Fi range extender from Amazon? I think a base model like this Netgear one costs about 20 pounds and onwards. I mean, you could potentially do this because it has a WPS system. All you need to do is press the buttons, pair it together, calibrate it, and Bob's your uncle. The problem with that is it's quite limited in range again. You have to be within the wireless range to be able to get the signal to boost it further. Also, wireless is not always stable. And uh, with these devices, you not only get a wireless access point, but you also have extra Ethernet ports to be able to connect other devices, much more stable and faster internet speed. Although you can have them on some models of the Wi-Fi range extender, but they will not be 20 pounds, they'll be a lot more. So this is kind of literally free for you and you learn some tech skills at the end of the day. Now let me know in the comments below which model routers you have and whether you are able to successfully convert it into a second access point for Wi-Fi range extension. And before you go check out these videos on your screen to improve your relationship with technology and don't forget to subscribe and click on bell icon to go from newbie to techie. This was Ash from Hill My Tech and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.